In this module, we will be dealing with the HAZOP method. The principle behind the HAZOP is to split the system up into a series of sections, or nodes, and then for each node, apply a series of guide words to identify deviations from the intended process, which will result in a hazard or operational problem. The main thought processes that need to be established are what is the intention of the node? What do we expect to happen in this particular piece of equipment or at this stage in the operation? What possible deviations from design intent may occur? What can go wrong? We do this by taking a series of guide words, applying them to parameters to produce the deviations such as no flow, high pressure, low temperature. What could cause these particular deviations? Why would this particular situation exist? If the deviation is allowed to proceed, what would the consequences be? The consequence may be a threat to safety, health, environment, financial assets, or an obstacle to the smooth operation of the system. What safeguards exist that may prevent or mitigate against the hazard occurring in the first place? What corrective actions can be applied to mitigate against the hazard progressing through to the worst possible consequence? The process should be controlled by an experienced HAZOP leader or facilitator. It's not important that the facilitator be familiar with the process being hazop The role is to control the process of the HAZOP and manage the meeting, making sure all nodes are assessed and all deviations are considered. It is important that participants in the workshop have the opportunity to comment. The flowchart in this slide shows the process to be followed on a step-by-step -step basis. For each node, what is the design intent? What's supposed to happen here? Possible deviations from the design intent may occur. Do we have more flow, no flow, less flow, and so on? What could cause these particular deviations? For example, are valves closed or blocked? What would the consequences of this particular deviation be? And these are all the consequences in terms of safety, health, environment, asset damage, or operation. What safeguards exist to prevent the hazard occurring in the first place? Do we have control systems? Do we have valve position indicators? And then what corrective actions can be applied to prevent or mitigate against the hazard progressing towards its consequence? What shutdown systems are there? Are the pressure relief valves in the system? The process is then repeated for each guide word, and for each parameter, and for each node. Some of the fundamental process-related parameters and guide words and deviations are given in this chart. For example, more flow, less flow, no flow, reverse flow, high pressure, low temperature. Can you think of any more examples? Additional parameters and guide words may also be considered. For example, loss of utilities and or services, maintenance, sampling. Different sets of guide words and deviations are used in different industries and for different situations. For example, when dealing with batch operations, guide words relating to the sequencing of an operation are important. For control systems, we could be thinking about the frequency or amplitude of a signal, interference and noise levels. Different sets of guide words and deviations are used in different industries and for different situations. For example, when dealing with batch operations, guide words relating to the sequencing of the operation are important. For control systems, we could be thinking about the frequency or amplitude of a signal, 
interference and noise levels. The normal approach to a HAZOP is to consider only single failure events. However, in some cases it may be necessary to consider multiple failure cases. So-called double jeopardy events are multiple independent events which occur at the same time. These events conspire to cause a hazardous situation. Double jeopardy events are not common, but they do occur. And, even where the likelihood is very small, the consequences may be of such catastrophic proportions that provision has to be made to provide safeguards against them. Double jeopardy events are not the same as common mode failures or common cause failures. In these cases, there is an identifiable common association which is at the heart of the failure of two or more parts of the process. In double jeopardy events, there is no such association and the causes of failure are completely independent. In common cause failures, there's an identifiable common association or common mode which causes the failure of two or more parts of the process. Look at this example. The first failure, loss of flow control, will cause higher pressure in the column. The second failure, loss of cooling, will also cause pressure to rise in the column. If the two causes have common modes, for example, loss of the control system or loss of utilities, then this is a common cause failure and not double jeopardy. This second case is an example of process dependency. A process heating medium is circulated between the waste heat recovery unit and the crude oil heater. Any loss of circulation results in pressure surge due to heat gain from the waste heat recovery unit. This is normal operation. The expansion tank is adequately protected by a relief valve for that cause. But if a tube rupture occurs, it causes high pressure in the heating medium system, which results in the pump tripping. The pump trip causes an additional pressure increase due to heat input from the waste heat recovery unit. The expansion tank was not adequately protected from the burst tube and heat gain scenario. Process dependency should not be mistaken for double jeopardy. Process dependency is where there is an inevitable knock-on effect from an initiating scenario. So with respect to consequences, dependency would be an immediate consequence leading directly to a second consequence. The second consequence could be dealt with as an escalated event, but only if there were separate safeguards to prevent the second consequence. In this case, for example, it may be a second pressure relief valve set at a higher pressure. To recap, double jeopardy events are multiple independent events which occur at the same time. The events conspire to cause a hazardous situation. Double jeopardy events are not common, but they do occur. And, even where the likelihood is very small, the consequences may be of such catastrophic proportions that provision has to be made to provide safeguards against them. Double jeopardy events are not the same as common mode failures or common cause failures. In these cases, there is an identifiable common association between the failure of two or more parts of the process. In double jeopardy events, there's no such association and the causes of failure are completely independent. Process dependencies are identifiable and inevitable chains of events which result in worse consequences than the single initiating event. 
The HAZOP process should be able to identify common mode or common cause failures and process dependencies. Double jeopardy is hard to spot and requires a good understanding of the process and a good imagination.